there, so onto the guide section. I say hello there, it's this continuation of the video, it makes no sense. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry if I ramble here and there, I tend to uh, go off tangent here and there, um, but uh, I'll try and keep it as concise as possible. It's probably going to take, uh, I would have thought, at least five minutes, five or ten minutes, I thought, to get through all these different things. Uh, bear with me, uh, all the stuff I'm going to tell you now, if you haven't used SketchUp or you're pretty new to it, um, or you're interested in how this model works in SketchUp, it'll all be very interesting and relevant, I hope. Um, so anyway, first we need to download SketchUp. We'll do this super quickly. Uh, go to www.sketchup.com forward slash download, uh, and then you need to select um, a drop-down box of either professional work, personal products, or education use, depending on what you're going to use it for. Um, personal projects is what the SketchUp is what. Uh, Personal projects is what gives you SketchUp Make. Uh, SketchUp Make is completely free and it's completely free of uh, bloatware and nonsense like that. So you can just uh, download that, click next a million times, and then you should have it installed. Uh, you can use uh, educational use, um, which is enables you to do things like have uh, professional tools like exporting in DWG if you use things like AutoCAD or if you use things like Revit or if you do use things like um, ArchiCAD perhaps. Um, um, or uh, other things. Uh, if you're using professional other tools and you'd like to combine SketchUp into that process, then you can do that. But you will need to supply things like school name, uh, what you're doing, um, and who you are, and things like that. So use personal projects, unless you're professional and you want to buy it. Use personal projects, get SketchUp, make, and you should be good to go. So you need to supply an email. Uh, you can either select or not select SketchUp news and tips. Uh, I have had that selected. Uh, I can say that there's nothing of much use for you there if you're only using this on a on a um, personal level and generally on the professional level, it's not that useful either. Um, but uh, no, I do remember that one Christmas, I think, a couple of years ago, um, SketchUp sent out, I don't know if it was underneath Trimble's name or if it was underneath somebody else's, Google's, I don't think, don't think it was Google's. But uh, they sent an email out that was uh, a bit of a joke, but I think it was... Um, uh, um, sort of racist <laughs> and they had to send out a, an email apologizing for that um, afterwards saying that I think someone's been fired uh, no I'm not sure if anyone's fired but that they had to apologize for it because um, it was in bad taste um, but anyway so once you've done that selected news and tips if you want it or not nothing really that useful uh, you select what your uh, profession slash interest is you can choose anything uh, if you are looking to go into urban planning and that's your interest or whatever select that film the stage Law enforcement, that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, product design is probably most relevant for this. Um, but uh, yeah, so select that, whichever it, uh, you want. It doesn't really affect what happens. Uh, so anyway, um, select your operating system, Windows or Mac. So Mac, if you've got an Apple computer. Um, uh, if you have got an Apple computer and you're dual booting and you're using Windows, select Windows. Um, but uh, for everything else then, it is uh, it is Windows. Um, and then just agree to SketchUp makes license agreement, which is essentially um, a pile of the stuff of how to use it, um, or how you allowed to use it. So don't use it when you're selling products or if you're doing something to sell a product or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's that. So tick on that if you want to use it. Click download SketchUp make. Click next a million times. Once it's downloaded and it's installed, there's no bloatware with it, so you're pretty safe just to skip through all that stuff. Then you get yourself to this nearly once you've downloaded this from the video description remember there's three variants white gray and black which are the three uh, colors that the case comes in when you buy it uh, once you've got those you download those and you've downloaded sketchup you can double click on it uh, it will ask you when you first start sketchup make it'll come up with this uh, this comes up with this every time you start up sketchup and it'll say choose a template and you need to select one it'll, it'll come up with this saying choose a template uh, I use architectural design millimeters you can use whatever you want uh, 3d printing sections here if you want to 3d print with this um, but yeah so you can use any, any of them you want just make sure you select millimeters because only people that are um, high use meters or well yeah, I suppose you can use meters but really you're gonna you know do 0 0.001 of a millimeter to get yourself down to a decent scale uh, I wouldn't have thought so so just use millimeters way more accurate if you use feet and inches then stop watching because you, you not, you're not going to get anywhere with that um, so anyway you'll start off with this if you open it um, just using um, the SketchUp launch thing but if you've double clicked on the download you will load up into something like this this at the moment is my case model breakdown one which is so I can't destroy anything in here that I upload for you guys so um, so yeah so let's go and start with getting the setup of um, all the tools that you need everything on the top right is nonsense to you guys uh, this stuff might make sense when you use it more uh, and this but this, this is Kirkathias as a rendering engine from like way back when I was doing this. So before um, in 
Um, that was in sixth form. Um, yeah, when I started using this sixth form, so that's probably about eight years ago or something. Um, no, it can't be eight years ago, can it? I don't know. Um, so anyway, so that means nothing to you, Cook Theater. It's actually an interesting program, but it uh, can be relatively hard to use. Um, anyway, uh, it's, it's kind of like Jay's two cents here. I digress. Um, so we're going to want to get the large tool set. You'll start off with a small tool set, uh, which comes up here or here, but it's basically one th one layer of, of buttons with all symbols. Uh, if you click on view, click on toolbars dot dot dot, uh, then you'll have this getting started selected, which is this here. And we're going to need a couple more tools than that. So they all come under the large tool set, which will not be selected. So you'll have something like this. So deselect getting started. Select large tool set and you'll come up with this and then you can click on close without having to do stuff options here You can yeah tool tips and large icons and stuff large icons is relatively useful I'd say uh, especially if you uh, if you've got um, a high resolution uh, monitor to be fair mine's 1920 by 1080p and uh, Large tool set is ideal for me So if you're using something like 4k then I would definitely select large tool set because you'll probably be squinting Anyway, so just run through that again just because it's really important view toolbars Deselect getting started and then select large tool set and that'll pop up there and you can click close You might not have this here. I can't remember. It's been ages since I've actually downloaded SketchUp and paid attention to that stuff But this is relatively useful uh, But it's not make or break you can get all that stuff by accessing things um, through other means anyway I'm digressing again um, let's start off with the uh, how to navigate around SketchUp so there's a few different ways of um, selecting things, navigating around in simple terms. Um, we'll first go with uh, using the orbit tool. Um, if you have a three button mouse, then you've got the uh, center scroll wheel. If you hold down the center scroll wheel, you'll see that symbol, your mouse turns into a different symbol. Move your mouse right, left, up, down, and you get yourself rotating. So you can do several moves and clicks to get yourself all the way around the, uh, around the object. So that is the orbit tool. If you haven't got um, a uh, three button mouse or you don't like using the center mouse button uh, if you're using a laptop or something like that Then the orbit tool is here. It looks exactly the same as when you're holding it down So you can see there right left right to the next of this you can see it actually highlights itself So click on that then you can use your left mouse button and do exactly the same thing You can use this keyboard shortcut for orbit as well Which is O. if you hover your mouse over things It'll say orbit and generally the first letter of things gives you an indicator of what it's going to be the keyboard shortcut So you can click O and then you can also use it with your left mouse button and then you can click escape to stop using it or you can click space and that'll just cancel using it as well so you get back to this so this is your select tool let's go into selecting things actually let's move on let's keep the movement thing going uh, you can scroll move in and out by using the scroll wheel back and forwards uh, you can use these uh, oh, this is such a pain you just click on this here uh, zoom and then you click down and forward or back and left and right do nothing so back or forward I just Get, just get a just get a three button mouse. Just don't, don't don't do that to yourself. That's that no one deserves to go through that pain just for trying to get a simple project going. Uh, anyway, so now we've got the movement down, so you can actually scroll toward away from things and towards things. Um, we'll go into the selecting tool, which um, I hope I'm staying consistent here. I know I'm not, but hopefully you can keep track and that sort of thing. Anyway. Moving on to selecting things, uh, if you have your uh, button over something, your mouse selector over things, you can just click left and you'll just select those things. These are components, which so all the components get like boxed in a big blue uh, box and all the lines are blue as well, so that's why they're like that. So left is select things, uh, left click. Uh, you can also use band boxing, which is basically if you have your mouse from the left side and move it to the right and then down you make a box. Uh, everything inside this box, when it's a solid line around there, is uh, everything inside that is complete shape, uh, a component, object, group, or line will be selected. So if I let go now, you can see that everything inside there that was a complete object, line, shape, uh, or face is selected. So that's left to right with a solid line, and it'll give you that. If you go selecting from right to left, you'll see it's a dash line and not a solid line. So everything that is inside this box whether it is com a complete line or a half line or a complete face or half face or complete object or half object, it will be selected whether it is inside or it is even touching the perimeter of this box. You can see there, right to left selects specific things inside the box, left to right selects everything that the box touches, that the selection touches. So you can see how that works. So you can do it at the bottom as well. So up and down. So remember, left to right, right to left, you're good to go. 
so yeah, that's the selecting tool uh, issue. I think that is pretty much it for movements and selection, so I can move on to actually using tool sets, and you can get a decent idea of uh, how those things work. So let's get into it. So now we've gone into the navigation and we've sorted out how to move around SketchUp and you've got all the tools set up as that you require for using this model, uh, then we can go into things like uh, using move tools and drawing tools and things like that. Uh, one thing I want to point out first is that escape and space on your keyboard are two um, buttons that can be largely used a lot of the time to make things quite quick. So I'll run through how escape works. If you're using a tool like the line tool, we'll use these tools later and explain exactly how they work. If you just draw draw some lines uh, and you draw it to that point you can still see that I'm going to be drawing more lines if I click elsewhere if I click escape then it stops drawing but it, I still have the tool I can click escape as many times as I like but I'll still have the tool this means then that I can select a different point and start drawing from there but if I want to completely cancel using the tool together I can click escape to stop using it there but if I click space I completely cancel the tool and go back to the selection tool so we can select all those and click delete so that's a basic usage of, of, uh, of the escape and the uh, space. So I can draw things like that, I can cancel using the tool like this, but I can completely stop using the tool altogether by pressing space, and that goes straight back to the selection, which means I can select and delete whatever I want. By the way, delete on the keyboard does work as delete in the, in the uh, thing. You can actually right click and click, click on delete, I think, on things as well. Um, but uh, can you? Yeah, erase. So we'll bring that back. So Control Z brings it back, and Control Y will sort of reaffirm what you did then redo and undo um it's like much like a lot of other programs um those those sort of com those sort of ideas spread to lots of different programs uh like uh, i use revit quite a lot and that does it anyway i digress uh, i should stop using that that's a uh, j's two sensor sort of thing i shouldn't be here uh, shouldn't be taking his uh i don't know it's like his brand image now by now um so anyway, uh, let's move on to using the move tool. So simply click on this one. It has up, down, left, right arrows. This is the move tool icon. You can click on that. If I click escape or space, just completely cancel out of that. I can click M, which is the uh, M for um, M for um, mic. Yeah, that mic actually is the thing, I think. So M, uh, you can click that. It's a keyboard shortcut and means you just get there without having to go left and right and left and right. When you, It seems like a small deal, but genuinely when you're using this a lot, then it becomes more of a bigger deal. So you can move things around generally by clicking it once, which will mean it'll start moving. And then when you click again, it'll stop moving. Now, I've got two tips to using this. For a start, I think the best way to go about moving something is to select what you want to move to begin with. So select what you want to move by clicking on it. Then click the move tool or click on M. I usually use M. Then click somewhere else so you're not getting tangled up with geometry because you can see that the mouse will snap to bits of geometry. And the last thing you want to do if you're making a very finite movement is to end up snapping to geometry and it takes your um, accuracy off target. So go into some random space, click the mouse button down and then you can move up. So you can snap to the, uh, to the uh, blue axis. If I let go of the mouse, it says on blue axis. If I go to the right where the green axis is, you can see at the bottom down here, that's a green. Then over there's a red. And there's a blue. You see they line up there. That's parallel with the with the uh, green axis, and then down here is parallel with the red axis. So you can also use uh, different keys to, de to determine these things, but I'll tell you that in a minute. So once you've selected it, use the move tool to at least get it shifting. You don't have to hold the mouse down for this, by the way. You can just let it roll around. Then you say go on the blue axis. You want to move it up by a certain amount. You could move it up arbitrarily by just clicking, and it'll be moved up by that certain distance. But I would super recommend selecting it getting your move tool and then moving it up and typing in a digit. If you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it says length 228 millimeters. So that means that at this point it's 228 millimeters, move it higher, 277, then it's lower than 96, 97 and so on. So I type in a round number. So type in something like 500 if you want it well out of the way. So you can see there now, it's way up if I zoom out, it's way out of the way. And if I want to move it back down perfectly into position, I select it, click the move tool, click and then move in the direction I intend to move it and then click down click again uh, 500 and it'll slot it perfectly into position and you can see there that it's uh, it's exactly where it needs to be so yeah that's that so that's what I would recommend so just to clarify that select what you want to move click the move tool or M the keyboard shortcut click on in any open space and move it in the direction you intend to move it. Let's say move it on the green axis, on the uh, red axis. Sorry. Uh, once you've typed in a measurement before the way, by the way, it will actually snap to that if you move that distance. So it says on 500. But let's say we want to move it a meter away. So a thousand millimeters is a meter. 
And there we go, it's all the way over there. Then we can do things like tinker around and build stuff here and not have to worry about that being in the way. Um, but yeah, so that's a simple way of using the move tool. Um, another uh, tip as well, I mean this video is going to be like half an hour long by this rate, but uh, another tip, you can click on whatever you want, click move, move randomly in space, and then you can use the arrow keys. If you use up, then it'll be only allowed to move uh, on the blue axis, which is up and down. Click right, it'll only be allowed to use uh, be uh, moved on the red axis and then I click uh, left and it's only allowed to be used on the green axis. I cannot move it elsewhere. So that means it's like a completely foolproof way of being able to move objects in different uh, directions. So that's also useful. So press escape to cancel, click space to completely cancel out of the tool and then we shall move on. Okay, so now we've done the move tool, we'll move on to the rotate tool. Rotate tool works in a very similar way. You can actually rotate components, which are these things that I've made. Uh, they're basically band boxed in, well, band boxed. They're, they're sort of boxed in blue, uh, and all the lines are blue as well. You can see that all those lines and stuff for that component is blue. So, uh, yeah, you can actually rotate things by clicking on that using the move tool. And you can see there's these little uh, grab handles, these sort of grab crosses, and you can actually rotate things around like that but uh, that'll take it out of orientation, so we'll leave it where it was by clicking escape. Uh, so the rotate tool then, uh, you can access it by uh, in the left panel or the top panel, depending on where your large tool set is, and it looks like this. It's just two uh, arrows sort of, um, what do you call them, rendezvousing around each other. You can select that, then you can select anything you want, and depending on what the color of the disc will depend on what plane it's being, uh, it's being rotated in. So if I click here, then it'll rotate what is highlighted, which is that, um, which is this component here, and it'll rotate it round. Now notice how it's rotated off axis. This is basically because if uh, wherever the center of uh, my circle is, where I want to start rotating, it will use that as the center of rotation. So if I wanted to rotate this uh, as a component uh, properly, then I'd need to do something like make a center point. You can make a center point by using the line tool up here, or by pressing L, and then you can see the midpoint of the component is there, I could draw it all the way to the other end and then in the middle you can see a snap there it goes blue blue circle that's midpoint so if i select the tool get the rotate tool here which the keyboard shortcut is by the way q which yeah i don't know um i suppose uh um, r is um rectangle so q it had to be so using q then or using uh, it by grabbing there you can find the midpoint and rotate now this does make a lot of sense when it comes to uh, something I've done in this uh, in this model as to rotating things. You may notice that this uh, this model uh, or this co uh, this computer case has hinges at the back here. I've actually put into you can see this blue line. This blue line is part of the component, but it's not actually there in real life. You can actually use Q, find the center point of there, and then you can rotate the door. And then when you've rotated the door out, you can see it actually opens and it doesn't come off axis. That's because it's lined up in perfect center of that hinge. So you can open and shut the door. If I click on that center point there with it selected, I can move out and I can shut or open the door by no matter what degrees. You can type in what degrees you want. It'll snap to 90. It'll snap to all the like five degree angles as well. Very slightly snap, but it'll do a massive snap to the really big uh, axis changes like 90, 180 and 270. So anyway, that's that. You can open the door very accurately. Rotate tool is pretty handy, uh, but if you just want to get rid of the doors for the sake of uh, ease, just use the move tool, shift to the cross, 500 will do, and it's out of the way. You can use like 1000 or 2000. Make sure it's a round number though, so that when you move it back, it's not going to be like 527 millimeters and you'll be a few millimeters out. That gets annoying very quickly. So just do round numbers, 500, 1000, um, one, uh, 2000, and then 200 for the smaller movements if you really don't need that much. Or you're just going for an exploded view. Anyway, again, so I digress. I hate using that because it's J's two cents today. I need to find something on my own. Anyway, um, so that's the rotate tool. It's as simple as that. Um, there, it is a lot easier when you're using the rotate tool to find like a corner to rotate things from or a center point so that you know that it's perfectly on its axis that you want it to be. Uh, that's a terrible um, example, but I mean the door is a perfect example. Finding the center point of the hinge and then being able to open the door like that I think is just really neat. So, oh yeah, <laughs> it can go buggy if you go really close into things or if you're uh, using very small measurements. So you can see there, if I do a really wide radius, much more usable, really small radius very very glitchy so yeah that's the rotate tool i'll move on now to uh i think shapes now 
Okay, so that was the rotate tool. Uh, now we're going to move on to making some nice and simple shapes. We'll start off with 2D shapes. We'll just do them by the side of the model here. Um, I'll, again, there are a few things that should be noted as to why, you know, when you're doing these things, uh, how you should get into habits, because, you know, obviously it's like driving. A lot of drivers get into bad habits, um, and it's probably best to just start off with good habits and just build off that. So, um, so yeah, let's get back to the start without me skipping ahead of myself. You can use a line tool. So that's up here, line tool, select like that. You can also press escape there and space just to cancel everything out. You can press L and that'll give you line. Find a point you want to start from. It'll start generally start on a, on a, on a face. You can see this is starting on this plane here, the plane of, uh, of the uh, uh, red and the green. Um, and then, yeah, you can start measuring things out. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner, you, the measurements come out. So say you put 250, so that's a quarter of a meter there. And then we'll just do a, we'll just do a square. So 250 by 250. Uh, by 250 you can see it's snapping to those angles it doesn't snap to the other angles but it will snap to these uh, these axes and then you can just round it off by clicking there and that's your 2d shape so that's using the line tool you can also use the rectangle tool there's several ways of doing it um, the rotated rectangle is really awkward I would not recommend it I would use the rect the standard rectangle tool the rotated one is only used in extremely specific scenarios so um yeah, it does have its uses. I'll, I'll show it off in a minute, actually, just for the sake of clarity. But um, let's use the standard rectangle tool. So you can click randomly anywhere you like, move it, and it'll go into a rectangular shape. But obviously, that doesn't really have many uh, sort of accuracies in terms of dimensions. So in the uh, bottom right-hand corner, you can see it's like 279 by 231. Notice that between 279 and 231, there's a comma. So if I say I want to do 250 by 250, I type in 250, click the comma, and then type in 250 again, and it'll be enter there, that's 250 by 250. We can measure it using the dimension tool there. Uh, you can either click on the line, or you can click by point to point, and then drag them out. So there we go, so that's 250 by 250 in that sense. Um, the rotated rectangle tool, it's a really interesting one, uh, only very specifically used. So if I do a 250 here, and then I'll do another 250 line here, then I can use a rotated rectangle tool if for whatever reason, whatever scenario I need, I for whatever reason need to do this. Okay, that's interesting. That's really funky. Okay, that's <laughs> that's it, it's such a weird tool. I barely use it. So um, okay, so you start off at a corner. You click on that corner. You go to another corner. Doesn't matter which corner it is, but in this one it's 250. And then you get this weird rotation sort of thing that you can use I could do a 250 up here I could do a 250 an angle over here I mean it's an interesting tool I want I wanted to go to this point here so I'll just get over in this direction it'll snap to it and I'll click there and again that's 250 by 250 but rotated rectangle generally I'd stay away from it I would generally use this one so using say 2 250 comma 250 will give you your 250 by 250 and vice versa with other different things so 300 by 1000 whatever you want so yeah that is as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, we have the circle tool as well. And then there's a hexagon tool. So we use the circle tool, click randomly, and then you want to get a radius. So say you want a 250 um, uh, wide one. So that's 125 being the radius. Bottom right, it says radius. So I type in 125. That gives me a radius that is that. So if I double click on this here to select it all, or I just select the circle, or I box it, then I can use the move tool. And you can see there that it is, it is on that power of, of the 250 so 125 radius is a 250 um, uh, di a diameter and that gives us a 250 circle and uh, then you can go into other things such as uh, polygons so you can you see here it's you have a random six-sided shape if you want to change sides of the shape you can in the bottom right it says sides type in three click enter you get a triangle type in ten you have a, a, a pen pentagon nine I think um, uh, decagon, sorry, deca that's the easy one. Um, so anyway, so you have that, and then you can do a 125, and that'll give you a, a, a 250 um, uh, dia uh, diameter. That's it. Um, so anyway, yeah, you can do that. Uh, it works the same as the other ones, but you should get the idea now of how all these tools work. Um, but now we're going to move on to making these 2D shapes into 3D shapes. Um, you can do things like use the line tool, and this is the slowest way you can do it. So you can use the line tool, go to any of these shapes, find a corner. And then say you want it to be, say, uh, 30 millimeters tall. So type in 30, go to the other line, type in 30, and then you can join them up. And then you go here and you, uh, and you type in 30 again. I'll just do this really quickly. 
And finally, the last one. There you go. So there you go. You have a cube, or you have a uh, uh, cuboid, or yeah. Um, so anyway, so you have one of those. It's that is one way of doing it. It is the slowest way of doing it. The quickest way of doing it, which is this tool here, is called push pull, and it does. It's basically an extruder tool. If you use any uh, any other programs like AutoCAD, it's an extrusion. So you just click on whatever shape you want to extrude. I mean, imagine trying to do that line, um, that line method with say a decagon. You would be there for a lot longer. So you can just click on that, that shape and drag it up. And say I want it to be 30 millimeters tall. I click, drag up, bottom right says distance, type in 30, click on enter. And there we go, 30 millimeter tall one. It's, it is what it is. You can do it with all of them then. You can actually snap to other surfaces. So you can see in the bottom right, that's 30. Bring it down, it's like minus 300, that's 30. And then yeah, it is super simple, as simple as that. Okay, so this part of the uh, the guide is actually one of the most important parts, and it makes up the sort of like the spine of this project here. Uh, you can see all of these are all highlighted in blue. One of them's highlighted in red. Um, that's another issue or another thing I'll get onto afterwards. So the ones in blue are components, uh, and those components mean that when you move them around, they sort of they they keep to themselves. Um, you can do you, this this action of keeping to itself, not morphing and you know going into different shapes. Like if I were to try and do this. What I did then to the circle, it goes and like it just stretches. Uh, if I try to do it to a decagon, same sort of thing. Do it to this square. I mean, imagine trying to imagine if every single time you tried to move this lid, you got skewed into a really weird thing like that. So control Z all that. Um, this those the component or group tool uh, group or feature. Uh, they both have they both work similarly, but they have different things. So first I'll go into components, which is the best option. You can make things components by selecting them. You can either select this button here, make component, or you can click on G, which will make a component. So if I click G or click cancel on that, click on this, same box comes up. You can name your component. You can give it a description. You can you can glue it to an axis, so whether it be horizontal, vertical axis, or uh, or a sloped axis, and then you can set that axis by doing things like this. That. Is not worth doing you don't need to click on none uh, you can have it always facing the camera so it means that whenever you rotate uh, it will always face the camera some people uh, have made um, uh, like uh, people like when you start up uh, sketch to begin with you have a 2d character but it is selected to always uh, to always face the camera so whenever you rotate around the person always moves towards you so it doesn't look weird uh, but it still looks weird um, and then you can replace the selection with component and yeah so the selection then is replaced with a component which is exactly the same as the selection so click on create and you have a component so now this component does not morph itself in weird shapes it just moves when I use the move tool which is perfect so where groups work slightly differently um, and this is this uh, this will go into okay I'll explain that now afterwards uh, groups work in, in a sense where they they work functionally the same as a component now when I said click G to make a component that is to make a component it's not to make a group you can make a group here you make group, it just instantly turns into a group, does the same sort of thing as that, but it doesn't have the same functions, and I'll explain that. Um, by the way, to make things like, uh, you can either um, select using your bandboxing um, uh, thing, if you select further and select things like this, and you try and make it a component, I'll try and make it a component now, it won't make it a component, it cannot make it because you're selecting um, extra objects that aren't connected to this one. So you can use the BAM boxing, which is hard to use sometimes because you can't help but select other things. Uh, you could use it the other way round, which again is hard because sometimes you might miss a, a corner. Uh, faces really only count for these things, but it's still not a good idea. Or you can triple click. Triple click means that everything that is connected to everything uh, um, to do with that face that you touched uh, will be selected. So double click clicks everything in one axis, triple in every axis. So that's always a great way of doing things. Um, so if you were to uh, select that all of that, uh, then you click on G uh, and create, then that's that's one way of doing that. So that you know, it's just another way of getting things done. It's relatively quick, other than selecting things. Uh, triple clicks is a really useful way of doing things. So what I'm going to do is delete these out of the way, so they're not in our way for this explanation of group and component. So. Up here in the top ring or the top corner of the ring, we have uh, forget that we have a component in the top and we have uh, a group here. So if I copy these, by the way, you can copy using Control C and Control V like you would in say uh, Microsoft Word. That's one way of doing it. Uh, you can also press Control X 
and control V, which is a cut and paste. Or my favorite, you select it, click move. And then if you look in the bottom left, there's a description down here. Control toggle copy, alt toggle auto fold, hold shift to lock into in inference. So those all do all different things. So if I hold down control, it's copy and click. Control, copy, click. So that's how that works. If I select this one, I do the same thing. Control, copy, click. Control, control copy, click. So you're looking at these going, okay, well, the, the component and the group are functioning exactly the same. So what happens when I try and edit a, uh, a group? So if I double click on this or right click and click on uh, edit group or edit component here, you can double click on it though, it's quicker. If I say, let's say if I just delete some of these sides and there's an open side there, these ones that haven't changed. They're not locked to each other. So if I go into here and say delete the top, you can see that it's selected for the other ones. So the groups are connected to each other. So if you're going to make a component that needs to be uh, copied out several times, um, such as uh, on this model I've done with the hinges, the hinges, are, um, all the top ones are copies of each other, all the bottom ones are copies of each other. Uh, if I wanted to make something that I needed to duplicate and they needed to be identical at all times, I'd use a component, which I would generally use anyway, regardless if I wanted that or not. But I'll show you how to work that uh, work around in a minute. Um, but if I wanted something that was completely unique, that was never going to be the same again, then I would use the group. Uh, to be honest though, I'll show you why I don't use groups. Ugh. Delete the groups out. I would only use a component, and this is why. You can change this. If I say make unique, right click there and say make unique, which is now uh, hidden now, because now these are two different components now. So if I do something to this, like if I draw a segment of that circle back in, and it will snap there, then the lid comes back. The lid hasn't come back for this one. So I can copy this out now and they will work differently. So I can do that, delete the side, doesn't affect this one anymore. I can push that across, delete that one, and then it, it's the same. So basically components interact with each other whenever you make copies. Groups, completely different. They're separate people, they well, separate objects. They, 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 you know, they have no connection to whatever you copied from. So hopefully that was just a really simple explanation of how that works. Delete those out of the way because you don't need them anymore. But um, no, I hope that I hope that's a really uh, um, a useful thing for you because it, it, you know it can be. Um, I'm rambling now. It can be useful when you're doing things like uh, we'll be doing in a second. Okay, so now we're moving on to what we've been building up for. Uh, we want to make or want to get you into a position, if you haven't been able to do this before, where you can go to a manufacturer's website, grab their dimensions, like I explained in the previous video. I'm going to have to cut this into another video because obviously it's way too long. Um, and you want to make uh, a rough idea, a rough model, so you can stick it into this model and have a really accurate idea of whether it's going to work or not. So let's first go to a manufacturer's website. So we go onto the internet page. Uh, I've already preloaded EKWB. I think uh, one example that I showed in the video, uh, the prior video, is uh, how to do uh, a fan fitting. So we go to radiators and fans, click on a 250 millimeter fan, load that page, and then we'll go to say, let's just get the uh, EK Vada. They're all the same sizes, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to make a super simple shape. Now it's really important that you that you pick the dimensions and pick all the details that matter to you, that really do matter, not ones that don't. So we scroll down and we find that in dimensions, it's 220 by 220 by 15. So it's 220 one way, 220 the other way, and then 15, or 120, sorry, 120 one way, 120 the other, and then 25 above. So let's minimize that and let's go about making our shape. So we want to make a square for a start because it's a square shaped fan. So we need to type in 120 and then we do comma 120 and press enter. Then we need the push pull tool, which I can get by clicking P, Move, click on that and move up. It needs to be 25 millimeters thick. There we go. So that is a 120 by 120 uh, by 25 millimeter fan block shape. So 120 and then we go 120 and then we have, there you go, 25. So that's that. So now it's a shape. We can now select it, right click, make component. Because making component could be really useful in a stage because you might have several 120 millimeter fans. Now what we want to do is shift it into the into the model. I'm doing this a bit quicker because you should know the tools by now. Uh, so if you move this by say 500 away, we also need to get this and we need to rotate it. We're going to put it onto the back face of this grid. Uh, so it's going to be positioned uh, central 
and it's going to be positioned where these mounting holes are, central to these mounting holes. So we've got this in its model form, its component form. We'll get the move tool, rotate it using those grips that we saw earlier on. And then we want to grab the midpoint of the component and we're going to want to try and find a midpoint here. Uh, you can see that it gets really awkward sometimes when you're shifting around things. Uh, and we'll find the midpoint of this line up here. Uh, there you go, it says midpoint of component. And it's gone. So you can see here that it gets really confusing. This is actually something, there's um, uh, one thing that I do use uh, quite a bit. And if you click K, you can see everything. You can see through everything. So it means that you don't actually have to specifically be touching on one surface and the camera acts a lot nicer in this view. Here, it can go all over the shop. You can select things like that. In K, it generally acts a lot nicer, but you have to be careful uh, how deep you're pushing your component into position when you're moving it. So I can click that there. Uh, it's one of those glitches you have to deal with, so it's in the midpoint now. And now it's a case of clicking K again so it doesn't get so confusing. We've still got it selected, you can see it's blue there. And we're just going to move it down until we see that things are lined up with those holes. There you go, so the holes there. You can see that a screw would be roughly here, here, here and here. And you can move it up or down depending on where you want it. So down there for a really low positioning. And then you can move it up, click left and move up. And then for a much higher position. And yeah, and that's the thing, it's, it's very variable because these are slots that you screw into. Uh, but when you've got more specific pieces like this panel here, if we move that out by say um, 50, you can see that this has got very specific screws, uh, screw holes, and so does the optical disk drive cage, has very specific screw holes in there. Um, so when it comes to those, you're gonna want to say move it away. Let's move that away again. And then to line them up, you're going to want to... Now, this gets really, really sort of... Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I have to use words. Um, it, really, it gets really anal. You have to get really um, into the... Um, this, this, this is sounding worse and worse. You have to get really close in to the... the, to the you know, yeah, you get what I mean. So you're going to want to click from point to point. So you can see there that if I move this away, you can see there that that there is the top point of the arc. You can make these circles more rounded, but it's so much more useful if you don't. And then you can see the top point of the arc is literally there. So you can move point to point. And then that's lined up there. And we move over to the other side to see if the other one's lined up. And of course it is because I lined them up properly when I started this. And there we go. So it's all it's all together. So that's pretty much that. Uh, you can rinse and repeat that for your graphics card. You can pull these slots out then. Select a, a few slots holding down control and, and the move tool. Move those out of position. Let's move these, say... Uh, 200 out of the way and then you can slot your graphics card in you can I wouldn't recommend deleting these just move them out of the way It's you know nicer for you. Um, if we just look around a bit more of the model um, I'll move this out 500 then You can see there those are the SSD um, Cages these are much harder to position so if you don't need to get rid of them then don't but if you do then do um, But yeah, they are a lot more fiddly because the actual slot where they connect to is buried in here um, and yeah, so it, that's harder. So if you don't need to get rid of them, please don't. Just just leave them where they are. Um, other parts of the model I'd like to show you, just so you've got a good idea of what's going on. Uh, we've got uh, that there is the uh, light sort of tunnel, which goes through to this piece of plastic here. So you can see there's a bit, yeah. So that's that there. It's got a screw mounts there uh, in position. Here's the LED. That's like a little bracket, so it like funnels the light through the um, through the light tunnel. Here is that side panel together with the uh, water pump bracket, which I just did the uh, immortal or untold, unspoken of rule of not typing in a whole rounded digit. So you can see there, they're two separate components. Again, clicking um, using select tool, either band boxing them together or selecting one, holding down control. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, there's some, uh, in, uh, there's some stir information. Hold down control and then you can you know move them together as one. So yeah, uh, this is something I failed to mention in the video, which I really can't be bothered to put in. It's like a, it's a sort of cover. It's got like a little two millimeter recess, um, which just covers the hard drive cage. I think that's basically for when you don't have a radiator in the front. It just makes it a little bit neater. Again, those have like thumb screws that stick out, but I'm not going to do the screw. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the screws. I don't think it's necessary uh, and you'll be you'll be fine without them. Um, but yeah, this is the optical disk drive cage. Um, and then again, same thing. You can just move that out by, you know, 500 mil. Uh, and that's got its screws there. This here is where the pump mount fits to 
the bottom of the cage so that again you can move this panel out of the way put the pump mount to the bottom uh, put it roughly in position and then you're gonna have uh, you know because it can go like left or right or you know up or down whatever um, and then you'll have you can have a reservoir all the way through here that would be really cool but do bear in mind the window only goes to here so you're not gonna see it it'll be covered up so this is one of the big grievances I have with this case I love the the window to come across here why they didn't do it is insanity um, but uh, I think they're just trying to because there's this optional panel for they, they expect that people are gonna need to use this for their water cooling pumps and stuff like that but um, yeah that that's annoying I wish there was an option to be able to have a different panel or you know have a modded or something but Anyway, I'm just I'm just getting onto all sorts of things that aren't what is necessary. So uh, I thank you for watching, um, and hopefully this is gonna do you um, some justice uh, in your efforts to get the perfect water cooling build. Uh, please use it uh, to to do all these sort of things. Uh, you can see here the, the clips that are here, but they don't actually match up to a clip. They match up to the space for the clip, which I measured out, but I couldn't be bothered doing the clip. There's too many of them. There's too many. Uh, I could copy and paste them and all that sort of thing, but I, you know, there's too many. They're too intricate. I can't be bothered. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah. So I thank you for watching. Uh, there's the fan filter. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching. I will catch you hopefully uh, in a another video. I will be water cooling this uh, to the end of this month. I've said this. I've pushed this back twice by a month each time, or two months on one of them um but uh, yeah i've spent quite a while modeling this because i think it's really useful for everyone involved um but anyway um hope you enjoyed it hope you'll stick around for some water cooling in the future of this case uh and i will be doing the modeling of the water cooling parts once the water cooling has been done um or maybe before no once it's been done probably because it's taking longer anyway, sorry i'm babbling on um thanks for watching see you next time Bye bye